less of that counter-picking style. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there we go with both Pin Ping and Blackout. It looks like a Zoo versus a Hunter and Blackout. I've known this guy for a while. He's waiting for his big tournament debut. This is going to be him. Yeah. His face doesn't look <laughs> like that. It's just a bit stretched. It's yeah. all good. I think the resolution of his webcam was a little off, but... Yeah. Pin Ping Ho, too, man. These, these are the webcam boys right here. Yeah. Pin Ping Ho, last week, known for the guy, uh, the Illuminati Hearthstone player, <laughs> as he had that big old triangle yep. right above his head. Yep. Uh, but this time around... Uh, it looks like a Undertaker kind of deck for uh, for the Hunter. Surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. So this is going to be an interesting decision for him. Does he just stay on the Mad Scientist? Whoa. Blackout is stretched all over the place today. It's all good. But he also gets the Undertaker start that he wants. Yeah. So uh, this is just the battle of the Undertakers right now. Both these guys are going to be death rattling up back and forth. And, uh, I mean, the first player to really start to, to come out on top of these trades is probably going to be the one that's going to come out on top of this game. That Eagle Horn Bow is going to definitely do work in this matchup. It's going to allow him to trade in that Undertaker really, really well in the next turn. Goes ahead and uh, takes the web spinner off the board, preventing him from making kind of the trades that he wants. I guess if he gets maybe some of those deck techs like the Abusive Sergeant that we saw Chalky run in the last game. Yeah. There's the knife juggler. And pretty good trade here. Heading into that knife juggler with the mad scientist. Taking a fair amount of pressure off the board and putting a secret up for yourself. If it's freezing trap, sending that undertaker back. Not a bad thing. Oh, wow. Instead, he's going to decide to yeah, go for the UTH. I'm not sure if he actually runs freezing trap. Uh, I think this style of hunter that he's running here is uh, a two explosive, one snake trap kind of dealio. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's. I guess a bit more similar to the face hunters we've seen a little bit of. Uh, a little bit of. Yeah. Uh, we did see Chalky running the uh, explosive trap in the last match as well. Didn't work out too well Didn't for him, Didn't work though. so well for him. That, uh, oh, it actually is a freezing trap. So, okay. Uh, two, sorry, explosives explosive and trap. two explosives and one freezing trap, it looks like, is what right. Blackout's running here. All right, and you can tell that it is the explosive trap that's played because he can't play his second explosive trap that he's got in hand. Uh, that's just a little, little tell. About what it is. Oh, I just thought uh, the game was bugging out when that <laughs> the game happened. Was just bugging out. Um, really, only yeah. one course of action here. Really? Yeah. Just drop that Undertaker and go ahead and hero power. Yep. Unless you want to give him back a, uh, what is it, a four mana Silverback Patriarch? It'd or be a like five, mana five mana Silverback Patriarch. It's a three patriarch. mana one four. Yeah. Best card in the game. Well, it did almost stop Firebat from getting to, uh, to BlizzCon. Yeah. Uh, so that card definitely has its uses. Finds out that it's explosive trap. I remember watching, uh, um, who was it? Someone was experimenting with the Silverback Patriarch actually being in a, in the, the Hunter deck. Uh, because of the, the fantastic synergy that it gets with Houndmaster. Oh man, that, that, you turn that, that three, six. You turn that pathetic one, four <laughs> into a three, six. Wow. Sick. Sick plays. Right. Pin Ping Ho, clearly valuing that one four though. Yeah. It's uh, it's interesting to see this deck. It really is. It's um, it's a little bit different from kind of the more established hunter decks we're seeing on ladder in North America right now. Yeah. And uh, it's looking like he's he's in a very favorable spot. He's at 29 health compared to 24. Still though, his hand's not that great. It's a pretty dead hand. Having two traps in your hand That's is true. is not the greatest because stacking those traps ends up. I mean, you can proc both those traps with one creature. Right. And the other thing is that. A huge source of Hunter's power right now is the Mad Scientist. You play two mana, you play a two mana card, you get yeah. a two two. But then on top of that, you're also getting a two mana secret. Yeah. So it's pretty much a free two two if if you follow that kind of logic. Yeah. Now that he's just got the two traps in hand, it's looking pretty good for Blackout. Actually, I think it's a free trap. It's a free trap. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> no problem. But uh. When you draw into those, a 2-2 a two -two for 2 mana is not that great by itself. So when you draw into all your traps early on, which Pin Pingo has done, that just gets rid of so much of the value if you draw that Mad Scientist late game. Yeah. It clogs up your hand. Yeah. It's it's just going to be a 2 mana 2-2 two -two with yeah. no trap activation. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and here's the Sync Trap. This is the more standard hunter that we're seeing a lot on, on the EU side and on the NA side. And... Uh, 
with the Chilwin Yetis. Usually it's double freezing trap, single snake trap, and uh, just Ooh. a very standard list. Ooh. Trap boys right now. That Yeti is something of a dead card. Yeah, the flare it's, value, though. The flare value. I really feel like right now a lot more uh, – you're going to see a lot more flares in these under decks. Ooh, that's got to hurt. Yeah. That's got to hurt. A six-mana vanilla 4-5. Yeah. Not what you want to see. Is he going to go ahead and drop the silence on the web spinner or the creeper? Yeah, does go for the creeper. Yeah. So despite Pin that Pingho being clogged up pretty early – He's getting dangerously close to lethal, counting it up right now. They believe he's three, two off. Two off. Yeah. But with no way to, uh, with no way for Blackout to heal up. Wait, how much health is he at, Milk? Two health. Great job. It's, it's, it's That's my value as a caster. Yeah. Counting two health on the board. All right. And that's unfortunately, Blackout going to drop game number one. Yeah. I just oh, wow. Think. Oh, and, wait. No, that's not going to do it's it. It's not going to save it. There's yeah. a hero power coming up next turn. One way or another, yep. Blackout going to drop the Hunter Mirror to Pin Ping Ho, and he advances. Uh, of course, you see him on the Shaman. Blackout bringing out the Rogue. And uh, I don't know. This uh, this is a pretty good start. The Shades of Nax Ramus for Pin Ping Ho. That's a, a little bit of an interesting addition to that Shaman deck. Yeah, and you can see Blackout is not happy with a starting can hand, uh Ouch. Yeah. Just a Shadow Step, too. That's rough. He's going to shadow step his Drake and pray for an extra answer. <laughs> um, oh, well, oh, both these players actually don't have the greatest of hands. You don't want to play too slow as, like a, as a shaman though. against a rogue. You, you can't afford to play too slow just because giving the, sh giving the rogue just time to draw into the auctioneers, play down the auctioneers. Yep. Coining out the shade, though. Yeah, this is... I think this is the same deck he was running last week. It was really interesting to see the uh, Yetis and the the Shade of Naxxramas. Yeah. And I think the reason he was doing that was a Bloodlust in that deck. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure, but it's kind of it's kind of the same thought process you see for a lot of Druids. Yeah. Just uh, Bloodlust is a, a Savage Roar on, on steroids. But, uh, and it's a little bit easier for Shamans to get the tokens as well. But at the same time, the Bloodlust can be harder to fit in because it can sit as a dead card in your hand because it doesn't affect your face either. So it, it takes away a lot of options to trade earlier on as well. Um, he's going to be able to clear this this mana tide, but using the Abyss Ray just to clear that off. Yeah, that's rough. It's going to draw a lot of pow power. How long is he going to keep the Shade Stealth? Until it's a 30-30. It's yeah, exactly. It's going to be an OTK <laughs> Shaman. Well, he does actually, you know, we joke, but it's like he's got the Alakir, he's got the Rockbiter. He has a lot of ways to actually push through lethal in just a single turn. Yeah. I would just keep it stealth right here. Why bring it out? Yep. <laughs> no, yeah. No, seriously, though. What is a rogue going to do to be able to remove exactly. a stealth a stealth shade? Nothing. Double Double po uh, deadly poison into blade flurry yep. is about the only thing, and even that's like quickly slipping out of his reach. Yeah. Oh, uh, there's the Lothab as well. Pin Ping Ho just looking so good in the Shaman versus Rogue matchup. Okay. Well, he's confident. He knows that to be able to clear the shade, he's almost certainly going to have to take that damage to the face, just because there's no way he's going to be able to play this. Oh, or do that. Oh, wow. Nicely I don't know done. about bringing out the shade this turn. Yeah. Seems like Pin Ping Ho maybe just got a little bit concerned about his own ability to win this game, given the fact that Rogue's about to hit that Gadget Sand Power Spike. But at the same time, his hand is fantastic. Yeah. And he, he really just wants to pile on the pressure because come turn nine, that's a 12 damage burst that he's going to have from Alakir Rockbiter. And uh, so as long as he keeps putting on the pressure, then he should be in a great position. He can even use these, you know what, just throw away all these, throw a Flame Tongue down, just empty his hand next turn and he's got a uh, he's still gonna have a pretty good chance all right considering that a uh, five damage of eviscerate to clear either the fire elemental or the low thed Ooh, is he gonna s sap the low yeah i was gonna say it's like the nice thing about popping the eviscerate oh. on the uh on the low thed is that you can Ooh, backstab. One card out of one card out of order there. But it looks like he's Blackout's happy to just go ahead and take the uh, five damage to face.
And uh, get rid of that low stab. Yep. How much damage is this? This is a lot. He has nine damage in his hand right now. Just empty. With an empty board, nine damage. I wonder about playing both flame tongues here. Is that ridiculous? I would probably tote him up first. Yeah. Um. Well, no. But it's yeah. You want to tote him up first because it doesn't really affect your play regardless. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that you're not going to really do anything that's going to take up your whole mana pool here. Mm -hmm. Would you ever play a flame tongue on an empty board just setting up for that turn eight Alec here? Not really, but not a really. double flame tongue, maybe. Maybe. What but about that feral spirits? Though? Like desperation. Yeah. Feral spirits is okay, but it's going to make it so you it's can't play that overload. Alec here next yep. turn. Um, but it, it still sets you up for that turn nine Alec here. Yeah. You can turn nine Alec here rock fighter. Yeah. So I think that's what he's going to plan for, which oh, I like. Wow, and he lightning bolts as well, knowing that next turn is a, a dead turn anyway. Yeah. With the overload, he's just going to put down as much damage as he can, yeah. front load those overloads, and just. Go for the the dream turn nine, like you said. Yeah. Alakir, Rockbiter. Yeah. So he's still going to be able to draw through a lot of his deck, but I just don't think it's really going to be enough. All Pimpingo has to do next turn is play damage control. Mm -hmm. He has two turns to basically just live. And then he's in good shape. Saps the 2-2. Two, two. It's going to be a uh, two mana, uh, I believe, Frost Wolf. Yeah. All right, and there's another... Everyone's favorite 8-8 eight, eight minion. Three yeah. mana Van Cleef in a Miracle Rogue deck. It's the third time we've seen it in today's matches. And yeah, he's just going to play the taunt. Probably towed him up. That's it. <laughs> what else can? What else should he do here? Yep. He might even just go ahead and rock by to the face, just in case, even if there's an Earthen Ring Farseer that comes out. He's still going to be in good shape. That's very telling, though. That is. But, yeah, that's exactly right. what he's going to do. Pushing out. Damage to the rogue's face. Eight damage. Uh, sorry, eight health now for Blackout's rogue. This is not looking good. Yeah, I don't think there's any way you can come back in this. Oh, Lotheb is actually the only way. Yeah. And even then, if he doesn't kill off this flame tongue, it's he's dead anyway. Well, they call him Miracle Rogue for a reason. Oh wait. Oh, Cold does blood. he have lethal? I he's can't four damage he's off. He is four damage off lethal right now. Once this arcane golem hits face, and he's got the blade flurry. Oh, the, the shadow, shadow step. That's step. it. That is it. Wow. They call him Miracle for a reason. Sap the taunt. A nice 12 damage combo there for the minions on the board. And then the extra reach from the Arcane Golem. Wow. The pleasure is his. Oh, and here comes the BM. Yep. This oh, is what we like to see. Just strike. Just strike. He even and has enough is, mana for the dagger and the shiv. This is this where is you BM end it with just a one. Oh. Shiv the face. Shiv your own face. Look at Blackout smiling over there. Thank you very much, sir. I will Thank take that you. win. All right. That's going to tie up the match. Uh, I'm waiting for one of these players to be bold enough to take the handlock. Oh, Earthen Ring Farseer and Mortal Coil. And a Soul Fire. And that the Soul Fire. It's looking like handlock. Looking like home. handlock. Don't see many zoos. I've seen zoos run Mortal Coil. Haven't seen zoos run Earthen Ring Farseer in a long, long time. Yep. Long, long time being forever. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> now, Voodoo Doctor and Zoo. That's a that's a basic deck tech card. Blackout's having himself a giggle over here. Oh, you are you're baiting him in, baiting me into it so hard. <laughs> yeah, Blackout is of course we mentioned it earlier a player from the UK, so he is indeed having a giggle. <laughs> he uh, really likes his opening hand here. Yep. That's just so much damage they can put on. Eight damage on turn two. He has the potential to put out with that, that is, direwolf. That is absurd. Yeah, and I mean. He really kind of wants, I guess, a soul fire is the, the sole remaining card Ugh. that he wants to see. That is just grotesque. That is what aggro players love to see. Thought you were going to turn gross and do a two-syllable word there for a that second. That is just gross. <laughs> gross. Yep. Oh, but he draws a Molten Giant, and he has a Taunt Giver. Nice. So he's but got, is wait. it going to be enough to stabilize? Probably not. Probably not. This is this 10, is 12 damage that he's going to take this turn. Yeah, and it he's looks at like eight health. It looks like Pimping Ho is going to have to Hellfire to clear this. I don't know. He can actually Molten Giant Defender of Argus. Oh, right, right, right. But he might even just go ahead and Hellfire. But does, does Blackout have five mana next turn? Who had the coin? Blackout did have the coin, so no, he won't be. So uh, just going to go ahead and full, so far get rid of as much damage as possible. Ooh, the Tonk Giver goes down, though. I know Not he wanted to hold on to that. What want. He's got the Lothab next turn, which will. Oh, wow. He's going to just sack everything oh. in here. Oh. 
one missed damage there. Ooh. Is that going to end Maybe up? Maybe playing a little bit too quickly here. A little bit too quick. Does that end up making a difference? It's actually, I guess, if you think about it, two missed damage over the next turn, uh, because you will, you would have got those two tokens. Yeah. Now, Blackout's in a position where he can just say, "Oh yeah, I was um playing around Hellfire." Yeah. I know he, I know he runs it. I know he had it. Yeah. It's definitely I, a calculated play. I thought for about three seconds before I made that play, but I knew that it was Hellfire. Oh no! But the second wow. Doom Guard is exactly the opposite of what you want to see right here. Yeah. This prevents him from drawing into that. Really rough for him. Yeah, Pin Pin Hill just needs to survive till he gets to that crucial turn nine. A six damage Mortal Coil. But actually, this is oh, great. Wow. This He's is going to protect it. his. It w it, well, it's the only play that he could have made. And it also protects the uh, his Watcher. Wow. But that Doom Guard is going to take him down to just three health now. Pop through that Ancient Watcher, and then go ahead and loath that face for just three health yeah. remaining. We are now at the stage of the game. One Doom Guard's gone, but he does have that, that oh. so far. Oh, wow. Belcher. There are two five attack minions to clear that uh, Belcher off, yeah. but realistically, I think they're both going to go down. He can Argus into the Doom Guard and loath trade Lothebs. Yeah, there's no point in not tapping here because if he's going to play the Belcher, there's no point in, in uh, staying at three health because there's really no difference between three health and one health outside of a lucky juggle, a knife juggler juggle. But it's. He's going to have two more turns to be able to draw a soul fire here. Because then, if not, Draxus is going to come out. He can't Hellfire. He can right. He can Owl. Eight mana. Oh, Owl, Twilight Drake, and Sunfury Protector. So soul fire will be the only out. He did just call that discard the Doom Guard. So, uh-oh, one more turn, and the Drax is going to come out. And there's no way that Zoo will be able to come back into this if the Drax is able to be played. Is All he going right. to draw it? Not that not one. It. Oh, oh Shadow Song Cleric isn't it either. I think that is going to probably Blackout. be the end for Blackout. It's going to take a little while for Pim Ping Ho to be able to finish this one off, but he's going to be able to play that Lord Jaraxxus. Pim Ping Ho is looking good. That's a huge good. deal. That is the most emotion we've seen from Pim Ping Ho over the past two weeks. Yeah. He's happy with that one. Well, last week it was probably hard to see any emotion that he was showing. I but was just looking at that Illuminati triangle. There's the Jaraxxus. Oblivion! Mm. All right. Oh! Ew. I was just waiting for it. Sometimes you can, you can. Well, let's take a look at these starting hands here. And uh, one drops is the name of the game for Hunter Mir. Oh, keeping the Eagle Horn Bow from Pimping Ho. That's smart. When you're on the coin, Whoa. you can coin out the Eagle Horn Bow turn two, and you know that there is literally no way that his Undertaker is going to survive. Yeah, Blackout actually threw away the Web Spinner, which is not something you see Hunters usually do, but I like the call because the Web Spinner doesn't trade very effectively into Undertakers, into Haunter Creepers, into Mad Scientists. So uh, this is going to be a great turn turn two or turn one play, I guess, here. And uh, it's going to be really tough because he's going to have the turn two Haunter Creeper, Eagle Horn Bow, Houndmaster. He's, his curve is magnificent. Magnificent. Well, I will say... Blackout is a very good teacher. He was teaching me how to play this uh, this Hunter deck recently, and he laughed at my face when I told him that I was considering throwing back Web Spinner. So who's laughing now? Turns out turns out he did the exact same thing. Yeah, I actually uh, like the call to throw away the Web Spinner, but that's a, it can come back to haunt you because he didn't have any turn one play, and uh, now he's really against the ropes here because that's, that's rapidly approaching a Yeti. All right, Yeti so what, status. Are you, what are you going to do here? You can juggler first, then Undertaker, and trade in your Hana Creeper. Pray yeah. for some good juggles. But you don't really get much out of that. I think you need to Undertaker Mad Scientist You need to Undertaker here. Mad Scientist. You need that trap value in this matchup. And we saw that Blackout, or I think it was Blackout. No, it wasn't. It was actually Pin Pinko running the Explosive Trap. So, I don't know. Even then, it could be a little rough. It's just not looking good. Pin Pinko has a fantastic start in this game. And he is going to go for the Mad Scientist. But trade in a Lepernome, yeah. Pimpingo definitely has a head start on his Undertaker. Yeah. So I think also the reason he's choosing this is that he knows he's got the Yeti next turn. That is, a, oh, Undertaker. Going to go down to that Eagle Horn Bow. Rest in peace. Yeah, now he he probably trade into one of these Spectral Spiders and then go face with the Undertaker. Don't really want to put that trap out there. Still protecting your Undertaker. There's not enough damage on the board to kill it. 
And I mean, what is Blackout going to do? Oh, this is such a stacked hand. We saw this earlier from Chalky. Two Savannah high mains. That's rough. Although you, know, you are getting the stage where that's a good thing. Yeah, but in a hundred mirrors, Savannah high main isn't nearly as good of a card as it is in other matchups. They've got the silences. They've got the kill commands. Yeah. They've got the freezing traps. And usually the game is is all but decided by that turn six in in the hunter mirror, just because of how easy it is for a hunter to get overwhelming board control, mm -hmm. or overwhelming game control, or overwhelming face control, just complete control over your face. I wouldn't be surprised to see him hit the one one here, because if it's snake trap, you get three dogs. Oh no. Besides. Yeah. Well, a freezing that's trap. It, that's a creeper. root. I, I don't know if he knows, maybe from the earlier games, that Blackout doesn't run Explosive Trap. I mean, he must, because if that was if that was Explosive Trap, he'd be in terrible position. Yeah. Still a pretty tough call to make here. He's thinking of whether or not he wants to, Well, there's a couple options here. Trading into the Spectral Spider would protect his Leper Gnome. Um... And uh, he wouldn't have any real way to sort of kill the Yeti the next turn if he didn't protect his Leper Gnome. But at the same time, you're playing Hunter, resisting four damage to the enemy's face. It's like resisting that apple pie at the end of a Thanksgiving dinner. No one can do that. No I went back for that. seconds. Unless you're allergic Thursday. to apples or yeah. allergic to anything that's any ingredient that's part of a pie crust. Wow. There are there are gluten gluten insensitive uh, people out there. Sorry to all of you. Yeah, seriously, man. Come on. I'll, I'll come up with a different analogy. Thank you. It's like resisting oh, that. Oh no, I thought you meant another time. <laughs> We're still on this. No, no. It's like resisting that piece of of delicious kale at the end of that Thanksgiving oh, dinner. Oh wow. All right, now the vegetarians are going to be on us too. TJ, get a uh, grip. No, you blew it. Fail, <laughs> both times. Nice try though. All right, so there's a the sludge belcher in hand. That's a pretty good answer to that knife juggler, I'd say. Yeah. Oh, it's on curb as well. Surprised that he traded into the yeah. traded into the knife juggler. I guess in the long run it can probably have quite a bit of value, but at the same time, yeah, protecting that. There's that no way he's going to UTH for one minion here. No way. Yeah, yeah just goes ahead and drops the uh, Belcher and uh, Blackout. Is he going to Those... attack into this Yeti here? And he actually is. Wow. I like this choice because no secrets. You don't want to depend on drawing a secret. Being too conservative with your bow charges, especially in the mirror, not the greatest thing. Yep. All right, so here's the... Uh, oh, oh, wow. Off the what top. a draw. Pin Ping Ho. That is the worst thing that you want to happen as soon as you play that turn six of Anaheim in. Yep. Maybe, maybe a huffer off the animal companion. Yeah. It's like you went to go eat that uh, apple pie and it was it. all already gone. Oh, wow. That is brutal. I like the analogy though. Better that time around. It's just going to be a run. Less, on analogy. less people are going to be offended after the that one. The entire day is just going to be that, that Thanksgiving apple pie analogy. I'm He's going to unleash the hounds. Act like those are little kids going for the apple pie. Can someone come back here and <laughs> reboot TJ's brain? He seems to be stuck on Thanksgiving. Was there some traumatic experience that uh, this Thanksgiving? Oh well, man, it's it's all good. I, really I, I we were that apple pie, man. For for the people who are wondering what's going on, it's because TJ and I were grinding ladder uh, throughout Thanksgiving, going for that legend. And yeah. TJ, he had a traumatic experience last night. He was at rank one, two stars, I think, and then lost five yeah. in a row. That that could uh, that could break even the strongest man. So TJ, chin up. Go we got the, we got some games to cast, man. Going for that grind every season is it's is brutal. Ex it's exactly what it's it, the name in, implies it to be. It is a grind. It is a grind. There we go, Blackout gonna spot that that Savannah high main does get freezing trapped. And uh, poor guy, it looks like, uh, what's his trap? Sorry, did we see that? Was that another freezing trap or is it the explosive we saw him running earlier? No, nope, it is the freezing trap. There's your answer. It was the answer. But that does also mean he can buff this, uh, the, the creeper up to a anti high main 5-6. Yeah. And uh, this would fit his curve a little better. He can loath up the next turn to sort of secure that lethal that he has going on. I can imagine that the Hound Master would be the play, the go-to play here. But whoa, goes oh with no, the loath up. Decides not to. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Even keeping that web spinner on the board. Yeah. Either way, though, super dominating and performance from Pimping Ho. Great draws. Concede. And he goes for it. Blackout. The 